question. What's the best way to send a very large file a very long way? Well, conventional logic says you should use the internet. It's fast, it's convenient, and you don't even have to get out of bed to use it. But unconventional logic says you might want to use the BMW 3 Series. The car is a real motorway mile muncher that's been a favourite of any junior exec that wants to deliver documents or products from one faraway location to the next. It's so fast and so reliable that some would argue it's a more efficient method of delivering documents than the internet. To test the theory, I've come up with a race. This is Malaga in Spain. North, some 1,600 and odd miles, is London, and it's my job to get the contents of this dual layer DVD to London as quickly as possible using the 3 Series. In total, the journey should take me 24 hours if I don't stop for fuel, or food, or sleep. Meanwhile, I have a couple of electronic helpers that will be transferring the same 8.5 gigs of data. First, uploading it in Spain, and once that's complete, downloading it at my ultimate destination in London, which should take 28 hours in total. First one to deliver the files wins. Let's go. Woo, she's quick. <laughs> Oh, there is no way the internet even stands the chance. The internet did stand the chance, but only because I'm a moron that can't understand sat-nav instructions and I started going the wrong way. This ain't even a roundabout. What is this? Please leave the roundabout at the floor. This is not a roundabout. Once I was back on track, it gave me a chance to get my head around the new 3 Series. The previous 3 Series, the Generation 5, was incredibly popular. In the UK alone, it sold 170,000 units. And this model, the Generation 6, aims to be even more successful. Physically, it's different. It's bigger, longer and wider, gives you more leg room and more boot space, and it looks more aggressive. The bonnet slopes down like a BMW Z4, the front grille has a hint of 1 Series, while the rear gets its inspiration from the 5 Series. Yo, and special mention has to go to the seats. I don't mind telling you, my ass is comfortable right now. Yeah. That might change as we, you know, progress throughout the journey, and I will keep you updated. But right now, I feel good. So I just got stopped by police, unfortunately. Turns out that in Spain they have uh, speed cameras and policemen who are eager to enforce the speed limit. Who'd have thought? So yeah, my strategy was just to hammer it and go as quickly as possible and make up for the amount of time I lost by going in the wrong direction at the beginning. Typical me. But I got stopped. Yeah, I was going too quickly and now I have a nice little fine as a little souvenir. I've never had a speeding ticket before, so the Spanish police have taken my uh, speeding virginity, so to speak. Um, but they did like the car. They spent just as much time writing me a ticket as they did looking around the new 3 Series, admiring it. Anyway, um, yeah, their last piece of advice to me was to try and keep it under 200 miles per hour. I can't promise anything. We'll see what we can do. My confidence had been knocked slightly by the police, so as evening approached, I took things easy and stuck to the speed limit. I was making good progress and had covered nearly all of Spain, but with nearly 10 hours of driving under my belt, exhaustion began to rear its head. I had to stop. What up? I made it to a hotel. Um, I think I'm in like France or Spain. I don't really know where I am. All I know is it smells funny and people here talk with a weird accent. Although that could probably describe all of Europe. <laughs> I'm tired. 
but not necessarily because of the car. The car's great, handles superbly, it cruises beautifully, it's so refined. Quick ass report, my ass is, is fantastic. I mean, there's no localized fatigue, it's just general fatigue from being on the road for so long. But for now, if I never see another motorway again, it'll be too soon. Oh, and I am in France. Bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. No, no, carry on, I'm not stopping. Got a ludicrous, ill-judged race to win. A lot of people always wrongly assume that sending stuff to and from the internet is gonna be fast. It's not, there's so much that could go wrong. You might have a high ping, low bandwidth. It might be that there's lots of people in your area trying to use the same pipe at the same time. It might just be that it's the evening and your, your provider is throttling your data. All you Virgin Media customers know what I'm talking about. Anyway, there's a lot that could go wrong. This race isn't as straightforward as it might seem. What was straightforward was how incredibly tedious this drive had become. The internet upload was 78% complete and I was now 1400 kilometers into my journey. But I was slowly losing my marbles. Desperate for a way to entertain myself, I decided to try out the car's excellent stereo system. This kept me entertained and more importantly awake until I reached Calais, a real milestone. And it was a good job I was so close because the internet upload was complete and the faster download portion had begun. My final obstacle was the UK and the relatively slow moving traffic of London. There were no high speed motorways here, just good old fashioned A roads, traffic, time running out. Come on, the last thing I need is a cyclist, damn you! Oh, dude, come on. You can do it, you can do it. Here we go, home stretch, home stretch, people. Here we go. All right, all right, all right, new space. Yes, yes, parking space found. That'll do! I've got it. I've got the file. Have a one. Have a one. Have a look. <laughs> oh, I don't believe that. <laughs> I've won! <laughs> yes, in. yes! My journey was a complete success. I'd beaten the internet. I'd driven more than 2,000 kilometers in a car, had an overnight stay, and was still faster than the World Wide Web. It just goes to show, if something absolutely, positively has to be there on time, you take it there in a BMW 3 Series. <laughs>